Hi guys, very excited. On Swiss yes to today's Galungan, very important celebration in Bali. And I happened to have a lunch with my friend Thomas, who lives in uh, Hong Kong and is facilitating breath work there. And yeah, we just had a nice conversation and he was telling me amazing stories. And I said, okay, stop you there. Let's get in front of a microphone because everyone needs to hear your story, Thomas. So thank you so much for uh, taking the time. Uh, to share with us, we will talk about uh, holotropic breathwork. We will talk about the origin of holotropic breathwork because you have the immense uh, luck. Uh, let's say it's luck and honor, luck then, and privilege, yes, and everything <laughs> to to work with the the founder of holotropic breathwork, uh, Stanislas uh, Groff. So we will hear the stories. It's very interesting to understand uh, where it's coming from what uh, piqued your interest and yeah i think people could get a lot from this conversation so buckle up thomas why don't you introduce yourself to start with a little bit what, um, uh, what yes. you do so i'm i'm doing uh, psychology and breath work uh, i'm using the holotropic breath work the one i learned with uh, stan Groff. um and uh, psychology, at the origin, Stan Groff is a psychologist and psychotherapist. He's a psychiatrist also, so he, he did all the degrees in medicine and, uh, and he, he started to work uh, for therapy with psychedelics in the early 50s. It's very early because uh, at that time, the LSD was just discovered and uh, the Sandals Laboratory were spreading all over the world samples for a psychiatric research center to try it. It's amazing that LSD, I knew it, but LSD is a pharmaceutical drug. I just first the information and it's uh, not uh, been yeah, invented yeah. by some hippies in uh, No, 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 no. Uh, it's been uh, it's, it's big, a laboratory it's, in pharma. Yes, it's it's uh, it's from Sandoz, so the, the big laboratories and uh, it's been isolated uh, accidentally uh, from the ergot, the the fungus uh, by Albert Hoffman, so he, he isolated uh, 24 uh, different uh, alkaloids before he reached the 25th, which is LSD, and uh, he ingested a very small amount accidentally and got uh, an amazing trip on his bicycle. That's the famous uh, bike ride. And then uh, he investigated on this new drug that's so powerful for many reasons. First, it's the most powerful ever drug that was discovered. It works in his microgram, so one million of the gram. And, uh, and it's the, the, the kind of compound that's able to open your psyche and give you access to layers of the psyche that's usually not accessible. So when they discovered this, they, they, they sent samples all over the world for researchers to investigate uh, what they could do as a therapy with it. So they didn't know what to do and they sent it to psychotherapists, psychiatrists. Yes, um... uh, they, they, they've just seen there's a big potential and every experience is different every time. It's the kind of uh, compound you can't put in a category or for a special uh, result, for a special effect, because the, the effect is changing every time. So it's, it really depends on the psyche of the person that takes it. And uh, it's, a, it's a kind of uh, uh, magnifier, opener, uh, amplifier, um, digger in different levels. It does a lot of things at the same time. Uh, sensory and answer uh, and it's the kind of effect uh, western medicine we're not used to <clears throat> so they they send these samples and uh, at the time Groff was working in a, in a research center in Czechoslovakia so he was under Soviet regime so very strict science uh, very rigorous protocols no place for woo woo nothing spiritual really uh, the straight scientific way and, uh, and they started to investigate with it, <clears throat> starting first with a psycholytic therapy. So it's just adding a very small amount of LSD to a normal speech therapy. And they realized they could shorten the time by three, meaning oh. instead of speaking three years with Freud about your mother and father and mm. Nana, you could do it within one year, wow. which is an amazing progress. Yeah. And then they switched to psychedelic therapy uh, with a large amount plus external stimulation. Are we? When was that? 54 they started. 54. So. Yeah, so from 54 to 60 plus 65, something like that. Yes. He, he was uh, uh, maybe before 62. Uh, he was in the in Czechoslovakia. Uh, actually, he, he, he moved from Czechoslovakia uh, at the during the, the Prague Spring. 
the revolution in Czechoslovakia. So he got invited to a conference and, uh, and moved to the United States later on because he got invited to uh, propose to take in charge the Baltimore Psychiatric Research Center, which is a big institution. Uh, so, but previously they did a lot of trials, a lot of protocols with thousands of people rigorously documented, uh, whether with psycholytic therapy with a small dose or with psychedelic therapy with a big dose. With this last therapy, they could fix people with any kind of pathology within one, two, three, five sessions only mm. for depression, addiction. Uh, because they were accessing parts of the brain that they with with your conscious mind you were not able to to access exact exact mm. it's all about the unconscious it's all about mm. the subconscious the things that are uh, printed inside mm. uh, you don't remember it because the role of the subconscious is to it, a kind of buffer you know it puts it in the back so you can keep going and function because uh, without it you would you would not be able to function you could you would enter a deep depression or or, or psychiatric troubles and uh, so it's the, the role it's got but the, the thing is that the subconscious is not infinite uh, you can't put as much as you want in because at one point when it's overfilled the, it's like a box you know there are boxes for different kind of emotions uh, you fill these boxes with what you're living so if you leave too much sadness and uh, when the box is overfilled then the lid tend to open and it's slowly diffused in the conscious. Mm. So this leads to compulsive repetitive behavior. You're in a loop because your subconscious is pushing you to see, understand, to click on something that's inside. So you would process it and finally get rid of it. But most of us, we don't notice it until we are at the third or fourth or fifth time in the same loop and some uh, never, never get rid of it. Yeah. So you can access these layers that are under. Uh, instead of slowly diffusing with these compounds, you open widely the box, and a lot of material emerge. So you got you have access consciously to all of this material, whether it's uh, past trauma from childhood, uh, any kind of experiences or blockages or emotional blockages. And uh, once it's in front, it's just about realizing it exists, processing it, integrating it, and then getting rid of it. It's very easy. And that's why it's so fast, because you access a lot of material at the same time. So and then, but it, it became illegal eventually, right? Yes, so let, later on. The so he started to do these sessions and had amazing results. Mm -hmm. And it was basically you got the patient in the bed, the therapist on the side, and they could access them, uh, their subconscious, and be able to talk therapy additionally to yes. microdosing or uh, different dosing. Yes, yes, they, they could uh, could go very fast uh, with this kind of therapy. And he kept doing it in the US when uh, when he escaped Czechoslovakia uh, during the prior spring uh, for a conference. Once in the US, he got given in charge the Baltimore Research Center. Um, and they kept going with this, uh, these compounds and other psychedelic compounds, other tryptamine. Um, and uh, in '69, unfortunately, the Nixon administration forbid all the drugs. They started the 50 mm. years war on drugs, and they forbid everything without considering some were useful for uh, psychiatry, for research, for healing people, or whatever. It was all in the same bag, and the researcher had no choice than whether stopping their research or finding another way. And, and Groff, uh, observing the people in, in this session with LSD, uh, noticed that when people are picking in their experience, when they are reaching the, 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 more, the most powerful part of the experience, they spontaneously enter in hyperventilation. So from, there, from this, he just tried to do the other way around. And he had also a very big knowledge, a large knowledge about all the mystic traditions of the world, all the ways to access this non-ordinary state of consciousness, as he called them, uh, through different means. Because, of course, it's nothing new. Uh, it exists from the beginning of humanity. Uh, men are, uh, whether ingesting power plants or dancing or fasting or uh, pushing the body to its limits, uh, 
or meditating or uh, breathing, of course, uh, everywhere in the world, there are mystic tradition around breath work. It's nothing new. And uh, he decided to compile the most powerful things all together to reach the same state and the same effect as an LSD session. Mm. So he combined <clears throat> the breathing, of course. Breathing is a very important part of the process. That's the thing that changed your inner chemistry uh, and, uh, and puts you in a different state. It's, it activates many systems in the body. And at the same time, it switches off the mind, the classic conscious mind. So you enter in a different state of consciousness. And in that state, uh, the psyche is able to enter into a self-scanner mode where whether what's needed will be found and, and treated. Mm. So you can access different levels. You can just tap into the physical level, the physical somatic level. So uh, you may access past injuries, for instance, a broken bone or a twisted elbow or whatever happened and feel it during the session a bit strong, actually not really pleasant when it happens, mm. but it's the body that's clearing itself what's left mm. in this injury. And mm. the next day, everything's gone. It's over. So it's a, one more time, a bad for a good. You're cleaning it and, it and it's going. Same for energy blockages, for uh, all these things. Your body will, will do it by itself. It's just about entering a new state of consciousness where you let things happen. And, mm. uh, and, and finally, the inner wisdom is free and, uh, and it can act on yourself. You can act also on the biographic level, of course. That's what's so interesting in psychotherapy. Uh, you can unblock the past trauma, uh, all these childhood uh, stories, uh, traumatic stories that block you and change your behavior, of course, because when you have a trauma as a child, you will split your personality uh, into the traumatic personality and the adapted personality. So mm. the one you are, uh, where you are compensating with mm. a, a coping mechanism and different things uh, to keep going and to avoid the trauma to reopen or mm. to face it again. So for, for instance, if you've been bullied at school, uh, you will be, uh, you may be shy, you will not go toward groups, you will not feel self-confident enough, so you will not uh, network enough for your job, you will not find easily a partner, uh, all these things that are really difficult uh, on an everyday basis. Uh, and the day you enter this different state of consciousness and understand, wow, I was bullied at school by these two seven years old guys. I was seven years old and we were just kids in the school and it doesn't mean anything. And I changed all my behavior. Mm -hmm. I adapted all my life around this thing. Mm -hmm. I was not aware of, I was, I had forgotten mm -hmm. uh, and, and everything is turning complex because of this. So the next day, once you have integrated it, understood it uh, and faced it, the next day, you see a group, you go. You see yeah. a woman, you go. You, you've got a network event, you're much better at networking and your life changed from day one to day two. Mm. So for psychology, it's, it's psychotherapy, it's, it's fantastic. And there is another part, uh, there are two, late, uh, two different categories in the biographic. There's the pre-biographic, all what's around the birth process. So they discovered that many people were passing through uh, an experience that's very similar to being in the womb, uh, then feeling contractions, then uh, entering into a fear state, because when the contractions st start, the canal is not open yet, so they don't have an exit. So it's a very anxiogenic uh, moment. And then the, the, the output and, the, and the, 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 the outcome in the new life, your life. Uh, so you can access all the memories from intra, uh, intra warm memories mm. to the, your whole life, passing by your childhood and even more recent events. And there's another category of experiences they noticed. Many people were passing through. It's uh, it's psychedelic. It's uh, yeah, psychedelic experiences. It's um, uh, let's say uh, spiritual experiences uh, where you will access uh, a different realm. Uh, the, the the one of uh, uh, yeah, spiritual experiences, um, unconditional love. Um, 
sensation of expansion, uh, consciousness expansion or consciousness identification to other kind of consciousness because uh, everything is conscious. Uh, now with quantum physics, we know that consciousness comes first, mm. then matter happens. If there's no consciousness, there's no matter and everything is conscious, mineral, vegetal, animal, human, cos uh, planet, cosmos, everything. So you can expand your consciousness and go beyond your limits because usually there is you and the rest of the world. And in that state, you can expand and start to merge with your surrounding, becoming the rice fields around, becoming everything around, uh, feeling connection with the whole, which is the reality. Actually, uh, this disconnection is just an illusion uh, and, uh, and feel how it is really. So it's, it's a highly uh, impactful and spiritual experience, life-changing experience. Uh, if you expand and become everything, of course, it will change your perception of the world. Uh, if you experience unconditional love for first time, it's basically what's written in every religious book, but you've got no way to find it out until you experience it. Um, there's a funny way to compare is that and trying to explain these kind of spiritual experiences is like trying to explain what is an orgasm to a pre-adolescent mm. who never experienced anything. He will have no idea what it could be until he experiences it. And it's really transforming, transformative, yes. Wow. Hey, guys, I think you will have to play that again. <laughs> and, and, and it's a lot to unpack there. Let's go with the technique first. Um, I know that in holotropic, there is, you can breathe through the nose or through the mouth. Tell us a little bit about your views on that and what, what is the importance and what, what is the breathing technique that is uh, needed in order to oh, access these states? Uh, and Stan Gruff is very clear, is as clear as simple about it. It's just breath deeper and faster than usual in a special context with a special musical mix made with a special curve that's specially studied to trigger different things at different moments. Uh, and, uh, and then things will happen. So the breathing technique is as simple as this. The mindset is go with the beginner's mind every time. Mm -hmm. No expectation, no intention, no uh, trying to solve, solve something because uh, it will not work this way. Actually, it, it works depending on the way your psyche is structured. There are basically two ways uh, the, 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 the psyche is structured, whether most of the people, they're made as an onion. So mm -hmm. it's layer on top one of the other, poop, 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 poop. Uh, it's a classic uh, when we speak about trauma most of the time because of this compulsive repetitive behavior, because of this loop, you've got an initial trauma and then you re-experience the same mm -hmm. thing. So you put mm -hmm. another layer on top and then you re-experience it and another layer on top. Mm -hmm. So it's basically uncovering these layers one after the other until you reach the core problem. And once you have it out, everything is cleared, everything is solved. And there are other kinds of people with only one big core trauma around which they build a wall <laughs> or a, mm. a nut shell very strong so they are made more like nuts than onions uh, the, the shell is of course much harder and difficult to break so you need more energy to access mm. but once it's broken you reach the core problem straight on hence the importance of the intensity of of the, of, of the breath yes yes yeah. yes yes what's your personal views on and maybe maybe you can free yourself from Stan with all your years of experience between uh, nose and mouth. Uh, is the are you are you just guiding people to go in one or the other? Are you I, cueing them with that, or you just let them breathe without cueing them at all? No, I personally tell them uh, as much as you can go with the nose first, mm -hmm. just because it's a better breathing. It's a it's the best way to oxygenate your, your mind, your brain. Uh, it's also a way to clean the air uh, through nitrous oxide you're producing when you're breathing through the nose. Uh, there's also the, no the air nose, uh, the, the air in the nose that uh, capture uh, particles in the air. So there are many good reasons to breathe uh, through the nose, but 
in this kind of practice, uh, as it's a long time breathing, uh, they may feel dry nose or, or difficult to, to do with the nose at one point. So uh, I tell them, start with the nose. Mm. And when you feel you uncomfortable or you want to change or whatever, go with your mouth. And anyway, when they enter this deep state, uh, this deep non-ordinary state, uh, they are not able to choose mm. what they do. Mm. The body does by mm. itself. So mm. if nose is more appropriate, they will go with the nose. If mouse is more appropriate, they will go with the mouse. When you're hyperventilating that strong and that deep, uh, at one point, the nose is not enough. Mm. You can't get enough through mm. the nose. So that's why the mouse enter into action by itself. How long? What's the minimum time for a, a session? It really depends on everyone. Everybody's mm. different. I've mm. seen people breathing three times. Mm. <laughs> Three deep yeah. and poof going, yeah. and yeah. others doing like a 20 minutes, like crazy, like a yeah. sportive breathing <laughs> and reaching a halfway state. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it really depends on, on the person. Yeah, mm. wonderful. Wow. Um, when people go into these breathing patterns, sometimes there is manifestation in the body uh, cramping, falling asleep. Uh, having a headache, uh, I hear and read that, you know, there could be like uh, scientific explanation, physiological explanation for what's going on with changing mm -hmm. the CO2 and the oxygen. And there is a whole other realm that is talking about, you know, emotional reasoning for it. What's your, what's your take on the manifestation in the body when we are uh, breathing this way? Uh, yeah, the, the physiological response. To the change in your inner chemistry uh, of course when you're breathing this way you're exhaling much more co2 and co2 is an acidic molecule so you're becoming more alkaline your blood is be becoming more alkaline so muscles which are mostly made of blood are the first to react um, it depends on the intensity uh, of course uh, but some people experience more than cramping uh, it's uh, it's actually uh, titania so it starts by the finger. It's a contraction of the muscle. Because the muscle, when they react to uh, alkaline blood, they start by contracting. So it starts by the fingers. You could get the finger inward, then the wrist, and, force. and sometimes you finish completely like this, mm. very mm. tight. Even the face can go Even the to, face yeah, and, yeah. The, and the feet, the toes, yeah, uh, yeah. everything goes like this. Uh, and one more time, it's a, it's a bad for a good because once it reopens, it's a curve. So it goes mm. when it peaks it will reopen by itself. Mm. Once it reopens, your muscular system is much more performant, mm. much more enhanced, much more able to recover after effort. And uh, that's why so many uh, high level sportives are using these kind of techniques to improve their muscular system during competition or before competition uh, to recover. So there's this change in the body, in the physiology. Um, you're also producing much more energy uh, your cells are making much more uh, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. That's the energy made by the cells. Uh, usually every cycle you produce something like four molecules. Uh, and when you're doing this kind of techniques, you can go up to 60 molecules. It's mm. 15 times more. Mm. That's a lot. Mm. And there is the, the, the chemical change in the brain. This one is very, very important. That's why your brain is switching off from its usual mode of functioning. Because uh, you're boosting the level of certain neurotransmitters, uh, you're producing much more endorphin, much more dopamine, much more adrenaline. So it, it puts you in a state where you are at the same time very relaxed, uh, pleasurable, and very alert and very focused, uh, which is uh, usually doesn't work one with the other. Uh, so it's a very specific state. Uh, so yeah, the breath acts on nearly every system actually in the in the body and in the mind that's the physiological explanation thank you it's very clear how about the emotional explanation where you're you mentioned before you're accessing some kind of traumas that are stored in the body that could be you know emotional traumas or physical traumas like an accident um could it be as well that the the body is kind of stopping you trying to stop you from accessing some parts because uh, you don't want to it's protecting the the ego is protecting the the false self yeah and, and, and not letting you access something yes, yes. that is the 
more the unknown what you this is very scary if you access this space so wh what's your take on that yeah you you access uh, you access the subconscious mind that's the most important thing and then the most powerful thing to access to so usually you don't access the subconscious because it's the barrier between conscious and subconscious is very strong and uh, <clears throat> and if you put something in your subconscious it's because it's too strong to deal with in your everyday life when you have a big trauma uh, whether you put it in the subconscious and if you don't uh, you may not able to face it you would enter into big depression or uh, mm. into the psychotic reactions or this kind of, this kind of things so it's a kind of buffer mm. uh, that helps things to be a uh, uh, away from your everyday mm. reality mm. so you can keep going but the 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 unconscious is not infinite uh, it's something that's filled like a box and once the box is too filled it tends to open and diffuse so uh same for emotional blockages it's the, the same an emotional blockage is a reaction to a trauma it's a coping mechanism in a way so people uh, blunt them from their emotion, they, they, they make a wall around themselves, so they are sure they are not accessible uh, to others or to other kind of emotions or, or to what would trigger this emotional mm -hmm. reaction mm -hmm. within themselves, uh, so they don't, they don't face it again. So uh, once you are in entering this non ordinary state, you also dissolve this barrier that, has, that are made by the, by the ego. Uh, mm. So your ego is trying to, uh, yeah, to protect you in a way, and uh, and 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 once you open this, it's an emotional release. People who are blocked with uh, sadness or blocked with uh, abuse or with uh, whatever it is, uh, once you open the door, it's an overflow of an emotional overflow uh, that's completely uh, emptying as much as you can and it's a it's a release and, uh, and a relief thank you for that those compulsive repetitive behaviors could become addictions because yeah. so i i wonder in your experience in those how many years have you been facilitating sessions uh since 2014 so it's uh six years now no eight years now <laughs> do you see people resolving addictive behaviors with this practice once you don't need the you know for me the i mean the, my understanding is that an addiction is a normal reaction to an abnormal situation where you kind of you know find a way to cope with things that your nervous system cannot cannot handle anymore um do, do you find some good results with treating yeah, addictions uh, yeah addiction is a coping mechanism and uh and to treat addiction there are there are good results it depends on the kind of addiction, of course, because you can be addicted to anything, You're not only a substance, you can be addicted to sport, addicted to sex, addicted to gambling, addicted to anything you can't refrain from doing, mm. even if it puts you into trouble. Mm. That's the definition mm. of addiction. So it, it works for a lot of things. Uh, and uh, and you, you, can, you can really cure addiction. Uh, there are different levels uh, when it's uh, it's very related to a, a chemical impairment or a chemical change when you're taking drugs for instance uh, whether it's alcohol or cocaine or whatever it is uh, you will completely change your brain uh, chemistry the way your receptors are organized uh, and uh, and so the, the breath work on its own uh, is not able to to fix this mm. chemical imbalance mm. uh, it will help with it of course um, it helps you get you to the root cause of yes, what triggered exactly. the need to enter the exactly. addiction. So. so there are two ways, and uh, and Groff did it uh, actually with his wife, uh, who, who became alcoholic uh, for for quite a long time, and and he he worked with with this uh, method was first detoxing the body from the mm -hmm. substance uh, first thing, and then holotropic breathing a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot so you can access the core problem and you don't need to cope anymore once mm. it's conscious mm. but of course you need to to detox the body first depend on the kind of addiction of course uh, if it's uh, uh, if it's gambling if it's uh, if it's sex if it's other type of addiction uh, you don't have that exact same uh, mm. chemical reaction mm. 
but it works on the same principles. Wow. That was a lot, guys, to unfold. Thank you so much, Thomas. Is there anything else that you wish to, to share? I think we covered uh, quite a bit. Just, uh, no, just saying that the breath is uh, not only holotropic breathing and these deep practices. You can, it's really the main system of your, of your body, and you can really access every layer with it. And there are much gentle and softer practices. Uh, I encourage anyone to investigate in classic traditions of the breath, uh, the way the Buddhists are doing, the Taoists are doing, the uh, Hinduist or, or any, any other uh, groups are using it for everyday life and you can enhance your life, you can really change everything uh, from your energy, your emotional state, uh, your physical uh, sensation and capabilities uh, through only being conscious of the way you're breathing. Yes, thank you. And uh, something uh, popped up in my mind. What what is your take on breath holds? And do you use breath holds at all in your sessions? Um, and yes, you do. Yeah, yes. And what would be in the same context of what we we talked about? And, and there are tons of benefits, uh, physiological benefits of, of breath holds. But what's your take on the the moment of breath hold in from a therapeutic standpoint? Um, uh, there are methods that are based on cycling, breath hold, different type of breath hold that are very uh, documented scientifically and works very well for improving the physiology uh, and being able to put you in uh, uh, this quiet mental state and mm. uh, at the same time be very uh, empowered physically. Uh, and, uh, uh, and actually it happens that when you're doing holotropic breathing or this kind of deep breathing for long, uh, once you've been breathing for so long, so intensively, you naturally enter into this breath hold empty mm. mode. Mm. Uh, so after exhale. Yeah, mm. after exhale. And, uh, and this becomes natural. Mm. Uh, so uh, same for yoga poses. Your body will use mm. different position to stretch itself. Uh, and you realize later on, oh, I'm doing yoga. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and same for this breath hold. Uh, I remember after breathing so much, uh, I used to stay, I would say, an eternity mm -hmm. <laughs> without breathing, mm -hmm. feeling the best benefit of this stillness. Because mm -hmm. there is zero effort uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the breath hold empty. It's, mm -hmm. it's complete stillness with no pressure, nothing, pure static mm. thing yeah mm. and so blissful it is blissful <laughs> yes 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 so people who enjoyed um connecting with you what is your current offering and how can we connect with you uh you can connect through the website mindfulbreathwork.com uh, or instagram also mindful breathwork and uh and at the moment uh, i'm running sessions uh, of transcendental breathwork which is the same type of breathwork as the holotropic one. Uh, I'm so, also using different mystic practices uh, like Sufi breathwork, uh, Taoist breathwork, um, pranayama, uh, different kind of techniques, and uh, and doing psychotherapy because I've been working in, in Hong Kong as a psychotherapist in a medical practice. So combining uh, psychotherapy and breathwork is very efficient. Uh, I remember that when I had a patient who had very <clears throat> <clears throat> let's say very deep problems and it was not aware of, at all of what was happening uh, you can try dig it out for mm. weeks and months mm. Uh, mm. and that's why some speech therapy are so long because if it's completely unconscious nobody access uh, mm. neither the therapist or the patient mm. so if it's, this was the kind of, of problem we were encountering i would take them into a workshop make them breathe deeply and get what's out and from this we mm. can work and mm. from this we can go very fast mm. so actually i choose to do the other way around and do only workshops and where people would come and, and experience the, the the deep breathing and those with a big uh, output and something new coming out and wanting to go ahead in therapy we would start from this and go twice fifth time more wow. fast wow yeah wow and you do only in person, right? You're not, yeah. you don't like to work online? Uh, no, I do online, but I do online for uh, basically all the other kind of techniques yes. except holotropic. Okay. Holotropic, I only do in person. In person. And you will be in France next, so that's where we can find yeah, you. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm moving back to France uh, after summer, uh, and I will spend my time between France, Spain, 
uh, maybe Portugal later on. All right. At the moment, France and Spain. Yes. Cool. So we'll follow you on social media and your website. To, uh, and I can't wait to join one of your sessions. Thank you so much. Thanks, Alex. Bye, Thomas. Good to see Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. So follow also Breathing Cold Bali. If you enjoyed this, give us a, a comment, a thumbs up, wherever you are, which pla whatever platform is. Uh, it's um, you've seen this content, and yeah, have a great day, everyone.